He's Tim. And he's Sam. And this is Cinematators. That's right. And tonight, we're going to share some of our favorite scenes from the legendary classic. Would you say even say it? I don't know if it's not even a classic. I just wanted to say legendary because what is it, Sam? It's the Mask of Zorro. Zorro. Who are they? No idea. Three peasants pulled at random. This is a great way of starting off your villain. I don't know who they are, but we're going to kill them. Always hear the baby cry. Yeah, of course. I feel like that was always kind of dangerous because he's pointing it still at him. I don't know what it is. I'm getting so excited just watching this right now. Oh, man, there's just something so awesome about the crowd completely having his back, knowing that he's the only one who's fighting for him. And yeah. just owning all these people and everyone just cheering every move that he makes. Oh. Mm-hmm. He's the people's hero. Before the rock, there was Zoro. <laughs> We're playing this so much fun. I don't know what it is that gets me going with heroes doing things in front of crowds, uh, getting their back. Uh, I know there's been a few like animated DC. We were talking about DC before. Animated DC movies or shows like Superman getting beat up and then like people coming together to help him. Spider-Man is a key example of that. Fight one of us, you fight all of us. Yeah, like that scene, I love. Like, you trying to pick up some dudes just trying to save some kids? You know, like, you got one of us. You must be all, it's New York, baby. Um, even in The Amazing Spider-Man, I think it's The Amazing Spider-Man, the, the first one. Yeah, the first one. When they're moving all the cranes, which is kind of yeah. funny, there's that much construction. Uh, they move all the cranes baby. so that he can swing and, and save, once again, you know, save the day. Like, there's something about that where the crowd just gets the heroes back. I just fucking love it. Yeah. You just get yeah. swept up in it. You can't help it. Of course, it's raining. It's always going to be raining because it's, of course, it's not a good day. I don't know why, but this scene pops in my head all the time, just just randomly all the time. The fear on him, just trying to get out. Yeah, the desperation of him just shaking yeah. those. He's not getting out with, by shaking those bars. Oh, but this a hole coming up. Let me hold up. Let me hold up. And once again, he's Let not going to like really answer not him. It's not even acknowledging she him. She has her mother's eyes. Oh. Oh, oh. Took it's your so, wife is taking your so kid. Evil. Oh man, it's so good. What a great start to a movie. Oh, oh man, I just, I, you, you know, you, 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 you show Zoro being Zoro, saving the yeah. day, saving the peasants, saving the people fighting for the people the people have his back they're cheering him on he rides home thinking everything's great no more of that i'm quitting it's done it's in the past i'm already i'm you know out of my prime i'm ready to settle down i got my wife i got my kid we're gonna have five more ten more other kids it's gonna be fantastic and then it turns just like that your wife's dead you're Arch enemy has taken your daughter. He's gonna raise him up as your own. Your daughter's not gonna know you. Your whole life is ripped away, and it's just like vintage Zorro to the story now that they want to tell, and just beautifully done. And it's so heartbreaking when he's sitting there shaking in the, in the the carriage trying to get out. Just you'll never get rid of me. Oh man, you can feel the anguish in his voice when he's just screaming out, "You'll never be rid of me." You know, it just, he's, it, it, oh, oh. The dude, oh, man. It does such a great job setting up him, uh, setting up Anthony Hopkins as Zorro, and then setting up, I forget the guy's name in real life, but Don Raphael is this, is this like, just bad guy, even though he kind of has a little bit of principle. He's got a little bit of something, you know, when, when the wife uh, gets killed and he just immediately stabs <laughs> this captain of his guard. <laughs> You know, and says, I would yeah. never let anything have happened to her. Well, she was never yours to protect. Like, it's so good. And then what's what's crazy is that mirrors at the very end when Elena, all grown up, mm-hmm. goes to jump in front of them as they're fighting, as him and, and um, as Raphael and Zorro are fighting. Well, I guess not Zorro at the time. But Diego. you know what I mean. Diego, when Raphael Diego and Diego are fighting. Yeah, Diego de la Vega. When they're fighting, he actually is able this time to stop the guard from shooting. Did you notice mm-hmm. that? 
Yeah. yeah, on this rewatch, I was like, oh man, it mirrors it perfectly. But this time, he stopped the guard from killing his daughter, unlike the beginning of the movie, like we just saw, where he uh, didn't was didn't was was not there in time. So it's yeah. kind of a weird thing because they normally do that with heroes where they learn their lesson, and this time yeah. it's a villain who was like, oh no, this guy's gonna shoot her, no no no, you know, and, and saved her. So yeah. it's like this. It's like a weird twist on that trope. So, so well written, so well acted. Oh man, Anthony Hopkins. Oh, yeah, so there's good. a reason he's such a classic actor. He's good. Well, he brings you in, you know. Yeah. Even when he's in that, when he's in that great or the the carriage, and he just let me hold her. Like just he has this like when he whispers, you like mm-hmm. you just get sucked in. His screen presence is captivating, and yeah, he's when definitely he talks, presence. Too. You listen, yeah. Because you can get loud and you're like, oh, I'm so scared. And then he just like talks so softly and just brings you in. Mm-hmm. And it's just, especially in this movie, when he's going back and forth with Alejandro and just yelling at him at one point, but then like praising him at the next. And it's just so good. Yeah. Ooh, that was a little too rough. What if he was just knocked out? Get him out of here before he starts to stink. So callous about how they treat these prisoners. I love they cut back to the shot of that guy walking away. He's like shooting at them. And he's still as wily. He's as wily as a fox. It's wily. What? Wily. Say with me. Say wily. 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 Say with me. Wily. Different movie. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Same in here where he sees the guy is dead. He's gonna take his place and escape so he can get his revenge. This seems very familiar. Hmm. Mm. Are you seeing this happen in a different movie? I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. Hmm. Mm. Okay, I love this because it starts with him seeing this bird, which the bird is like freedom. You know, the bird's perched on his window there. And it's like, he's just like, oh my God, it's freedom and, and a restoring of hope. And whoop, oh well. <gasps> Where's his shoes? I mean, actually, bury him. <laughs> He didn't get tossed in the water. He gets buried. Oh, oh zombie! <laughs> Fucking zombies. Dude. You think when they go after like their morning stroll and they see that the grave has been <laughs> dug out, they're like, uh, are they just are they just kind of like with their foot tap it back in? Nah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> This movie's wonderful. I'm sorry. I really love this movie. It takes elements from other other things. Yeah, that's fine. Because it works. It uses it to make its own... It, it takes its palette and paints its own picture. And I yeah. love it. Because it's just so fun and so uh, exciting. And there's elements where I'm looking at it going, man, this reminds me of Batman. Uh, this reminds mm, me of well, James yeah. Bond. Like when he goes undercover, it's like, oh yeah, that's like, I've seen Batman do that. I've seen, in some stories, Zorro was the inspiration for Batman. So I can I can see this really tie in and it's that similar kind of hero. I, I just love this movie. I, I love what? swashbuckling. I've always loved swashbuckling. So I love this scene because us, as the audience member, we know that obviously that's his daughter. And the fact that now he gets to like actually converse with her, you know, you know how much that means to him, even though he's still trying to play the part of servant, but just him wanting to connect to his kid. I don't know. There's something about it. It's just once again, of both of their acting is amazing. This and then Anthony Hopkins, knowing that there's so much more behind everything that he says and is looking at her and and this, this whole character depth that he has and the way he's able to play it so subtly. Oh, it's so good. The, the layers and being able to play it as yeah. someone who is he's acting like someone who's acting, which is, you know, that failing. that's layering performances right there. And it's, it's yeah. just, he does it so well. Say, yeah. Like right he's there. Like, he's yeah, just I know. <laughs> thinking of her. Yeah. Oh, but sometimes I do not. Believe. She was more like you. Perhaps. It's funny because he said it not so much like a question, but more of a statement. Mm-hmm. How did she die? Oh, that little moment he took. If you notice, all the shots are now like real close in. Yeah. To keep the moment. It's very personal now. I know what it is like to lose her. You? You? You're just a simple peasant. (laughs) That'd be so funny. She just craps all over him. I'm sure your mother would be very proud of you, Senorita. 
Thank you. Uh, kills us. Bernardo, I have to ask you. <sighs> have we ever met before? Mm. No. Why would you think that? He can hardly even look at her. Oh. It's yeah. Strange. Your voice seems so familiar somehow. Which is a throwback to when he was telling her this story. And his wife is like, oh, right. she loves listening right. to your story. He goes, oh, it's just my voice. And then here it's like, yeah, that's that's what stuck with her was right. his voice. Even though she doesn't even know that that's him. Something triggers in her. Just a memory. Oh, that's so just him holding on him too at the end when he says her name. All right, Sam. That was the mask of Zorro. What are we thinking? I'm thinking I love it just because, you know, swashbuckling. I love swashbuckling and they did it so well. And there's so much emotion to it It was as well, you know, just with the story of loss. And when he's talking to his daughter and he can't let her know that, hey, I'm your father. Ugh. But, you know, there's little hints that she kind of suspects. And even when she does figure it out, she's still kind of torn between her two fathers. She doesn't want either one of them to die. Yeah, I mean, you can't just break that connection. Yeah, not, not you know, instantly. instantly. I think it's great. It's a very fun action adventure movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't take itself too serious. It, yeah. It it has great serious moments. It has yes. pretty heavy moments. Mm-hmm. But it's just so much fun to watch. The action is great. The sword fights are great. I mean, I know we didn't look at it, but the sword fight, I think the most famous one of this movie is definitely on that table. Yeah. inside Raphael's uh, house yeah. when Zoro goes to steal the map and man he just takes on all those different uh, all the different guards and, and you know is pretty much doing some gymnastics on the tree yeah it's, and it it's fully silly too into- because then when he cuts the map when they're all chasing them they all still run to the map as they just <laughs> let it fall so it's definitely yeah. a silly movie but it's but fun I, I love the fun. fact that it it has it embraces all parts of swashbuckling, not just the sword play, but yeah. the, the using your environment and uh, you know, almost pre parkour before it was parkour, you know. Yeah. Before yeah. parkour was a thing, <laughs> there, he's using his environment to swing, jump around. It's just you know totally just showing the athleticism of Antonio Banderas, which bravo to him. He's he's perfect for this role. Unless it was the stunt guys who did it, so bravo to the stunt guys. Bravo! To the, uh, there Probably are, good. I'm sure there are plenty of stunt guys that did some stuff for him. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. It's a great movie. It's one of those. It's on. You're gonna watch it. I know oh, I'm gonna watch it. You know, Kathleen Zeta Jones is amazing in it. You have some great villains with Capitan Love and Don Raphael. The guy who plays Don Raphael just it's not only the way he delivers his lines, but the looks on his face with the lines he's not delivering. You know, yeah. When he's, showing regret with his face while he's saying something else you I mean it's like he's he's giving such a layered performance I'm like you didn't really have to go that deep with this you know it, you, you could have been very shallow with it but no it's it's so impressive to watch that and you it really enhances the viewing uh, of this movie I, I noticed it on the second viewing today when it was like my god he's just doing so much acting he didn't need to be doing that much acting. Well, you know, what's funny is because those two, him and Anthony Hopkins, I feel like mm-hmm. they both were doing that same bit. They were chewing up the scenery. They were, oh, they were yeah. taking their pauses. They were, they were taking their moments. And then you have Antonio Banderas and the, and the actor who plays Cap, Captain Love. Captain and it's Love. almost like those two guys are perfectly foil to each other, where the other two are perfect, you know, matches yeah, for each other. Yeah. And so, you know, I could watch those guys go around and around and around and around the whole time. Anthony Hopkins and Don Raphael. It was, yeah. It's a fun to watch. It was fun to watch them act together. I, I would say the sword play in this is somewhere between uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, which was a little more serious, and yeah. uh, the more lighthearted Princess Bride, which we've, we've also done. Which uh, it's it's yeah. somewhere in between there on tone, and uh, the sword play is just amazing. They did such a great job, and I don't think people point that out enough. You know, it's like people look at it and go, "Oh, well, it's Zorro. Of course, he's going to be a good swordman." They're actors. Remember that. <laughs> well, those some guys get in there, then those guys are getting it on. Well, yeah. And props to those guys. Absolutely. Right. He's Tim, and he's Sam, and that was Cinematators. That's right. The Mask of Zorro. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell so you get notified every time a new Cinematators video pops out, which is usually on Mondays. Otherwise, sometimes it's not. 
and then I'll send a message out saying that it's not. But it usually is. Also, let us know in the comments below what were some of your favorite scenes of The Mask of Zorro. Let us know if there's any other movies you think we should talk about. Don't forget, keep on dancing. You know, Zorro is Spanish for fox. For what? Fox. Fox. He's the fox. Oh my God. Your thing cut down, and I was just was like, for fucks? <laughs> I was like, I know I wasn't going to bleep out things. We don't have to start (laughs) improvising that.